What's up everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about deploying Windows 7 in your organization using Windows Deployment Services or simply WDS. So in general, what do we mean when we say that we want to deploy an op operating system? Well, we can think of it as tasks done in order to make a system which in our case will be an operating system or Windows 7 available for use in an organization. So. What are the methods of OS deployment? Well, there are really two ways that is usually done, and they are manually and automatically. And as you can see here, manual is the conventional way where we used to um, take a DVD or a CD, we burn the operating system on the media, and then we just um, deploy it by just inserting the, the CD or DVD into a system, a bare metal system, which doesn't have an operating system installed. Now this is obviously not feasible in an organization with many machines. I am talking about enterprises with about hundreds or maybe even thousands of um, computers. So we move on to automatically and well the example of deploying Windows, deploying Windows automatically is by using Windows deployment services and when we say automatically we means that we want to automate this process. We do not want to um, go by every computer and you know uh, insert a cd or dvd or usb into that system and you know installing windows that kind of stuff so we don't want to do that we want to do everything automatically so now what is windows deployment services well it is a server role which is first appeared in server 2003 service pack 2 notice the service pack 2 because um when server 2003 first came out uh, windows deployment services did not came with it so it's a server role which is designed to provide an automated solution to deploy Windows systems for organizations that utilize the Active Directory domain services. So the features of it include support for installing server operating systems like Windows 2003, 2008 and 2008 R2 and of course support for desktop operating systems for the installation of them which are Windows XP, Vistas, Windows 7. And of course, they uh, bring about the ability to deploy images using multicast connection. And uh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to explain what multicast connection is in this video. You can probably check it up in Google. Or probably if you did um, some networking before, you should know. And they also provide support to use boot and installation images, which are included with the newer operating system using the .wim extension. You'll know what, I, what this means later on when I actually demonstrate how you can just deploy Windows 7. And of course, it provides support for 32 and 64-bit OS deployment. Now, historically speaking, in the past versions of um, Windows Server, especially in, starting from Server 2010, the remote installation services was first introduced by Microsoft. And it was actually the first successful over-the-network OS deployment service that Microsoft developed. Now, the RIS did not support the deployment of server OSs and RSS had many limitations, but nevertheless, it was very functional and a valuable tool. So then came about in Windows Server 2003 in the Enterprise Edition. Notice the Enterprise Edition, you should know that. Microsoft brought about the automated deployment services as an add-on for, um, again, for Server 2003 and Enterprise Edition, designed to provide deployment services for only Silver 2000 2003 operating system. So this means that RS was still needed for desktop OS deployment nonetheless. Okay, so we want to talk now we want to talk about the three the four types actually of um the WDS image types. The first one is the boot image. Okay, so the boot image contains the WDS client along with the Windows pre-installation environment. The Windows pre-installation environment is basically a mini operating system used to connect a machine to the WDS server and provides the means to select and install a WDS um, installation image. Now this image is called the boot.wim in the newer um, Windows operating systems. Now you'll see all of this in a few minutes when I actually show you guys how to deploy Windows 7. The second type of image we have are the install images. This image contains actual Windows installation media packaged into a .wim file. So again, lots of .wim files, which will all make sense soon. In some, in some of these WIM files, um, many different installation images are included in them. 
Uh, what do I mean by that is basically um, if you have ever actually installed an operating system, at least the newer ones, you'll basically see like three versions. For example, Windows Server 2008, you'll basically see the standard edition, the enterprise edition, the database edition, along with 32 or 64-bit versions of each one of them. And also, um, they also, for the server, in the case of servers, they actually provided the server cores and of course, server core standard enterprise data set center editions that's basically what it means when we say that many different installation images are included in some of the installed wim files and of course this image is called it's installed.wim in the newer operating systems so moving on we reach have the discover images now what are the discover images they are created from a boot image as i should have talked about earlier and they are used to boot a system Load the Windows pre-installation environment, locate and connect to a WDS server. Now you may be wondering, so um, what's the difference, you know, what's the difference between this discover image and the boot image? Well, conventionally, you want to create that discover image when a network interface card does not support the pre-boot execution environment. That so when that happens, when um, your network interface card does not support TXE boot, what we do is we create these discover images and we export them to ISO files which can then be burnt or stored on a removable media so that we can actually go on to the systems manually and actually um, run the um well deploy the windows deploy the operating system of choice okay. so finally we reach the final image type which is our capture image and basically again this is created from a boot image and instead of running a conventional setup, it actually runs the WDS Capture Utility when you actually boot from the image, right? WDS Capture Utility is used to connect to a system that is prepared for cloning or imaging to the WDS server to create a new installed image that can later be deployed. So for example, we have SysPrep, a Microsoft deployment tool, which is usually used to prepare a system that is ready for imaging cloning. That is, you know, all the settings are configured and all the um, desired applications are installed in the um, operating system that are required by the particular organization. And well, what Spread does is really to um, clear a machine's SID and a system-specific OS configurations so that we can actually um, use the WDS capture utility. Okay, so now we learned about all this stuff about the image types. Now we want to actually talk about what we need in order to successfully deploy um, an operating system in our environment. So of course we'll need a server and in this scenario I'm going to use server 2008 R2 and you need the following rows installed. You need the Active Directory Domain Services installed, you need the DNS and you need the DHCP. You need a network interface card that is PXE bootable, well PXE boot compatible um, network interface card. You also need a copy of Windows 7 and you are going to need all machines that you are going to deploy Windows 7 on to meet the minimum requirements, hardware requirements that is. So right here I have a little topology that's what I created and as you can see here what I'm planning to do is this will be my server. This will be the server and of course this, imagine these switches will hold many many machines that we need to deploy Windows 7 on. They are committing, you can think of them as the WDS clients or the bare metal machines. And of course, in the server itself, I'm going to set it as an IP of 192.168.1.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and a DNS pointing to itself. And of course, well, this, all this network will be under the um, subnet of 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Okay, so enough of theory. Let's actually get started. 